I wanted to take a teardown of a modern car ECU. Um, so I have a particular one here in mind, and where this one came from is someone pointed to me recently about this claim that there's going to be this new um, unhackable, untunable ECU in some of the new um, Corvettes. So this is actually supposed to come out in the one of their sort of more mainstream models. And what they talk about um, is that you can get this new uh, ECU technology started on this L5P Duramax trucks in 2017. So that kind of made me curious about what that series looked like, because that's something that has been out for a little while. And you'll basically see, you know, there's some uh, discussions from when it first came out about how it's not going to be possible to uh, to tune these cars. Now you actually see these these ECUs in tuners, so there's modified ECUs available um, via various services. So there's clearly some method of doing it. Um, it's not clear, you know, if they have to do chip swaps or something more intense like that, or if it is just uh, possible to be tunable. Um, so back to this thing, right? So I'm able to buy one of these ECUs. Um, so this is the E41, oops, move it over here for you, uh, E41 ECU. Um, so this is the, the type used in a bunch of these trucks. So this thing actually is sealed. So I've kind of ripped it open already. Um, but there's a number of these sort of um, things that are crimped around the side. And so you basically use a screwdriver um, to undo all of the, the crimps. Once you do that, it then becomes a question of pulling off um, the top plate. So it's actually sealed with, there's sort of like a, you know, adhesive or something to help you um, deal with, to help seal out moisture and everything like that. Um, so what I actually had to do, because you, you can try to pry it, it probably would pry eventually. I just went around the edge, so with a blowtorch, right? So to heat it up just like that. And if you go around the edge, it, it starts to, to warm up, um, you know, and then you can pop it off. And it does deform it a little bit. In this case, I don't really care about putting it back. Um, so let's look at what's inside this thing here. Um, so inside this thing, uh, you'll notice that there's these funny looking like, um, I don't know, looks like little things, streamers coming through the vias. Um, what this actually is, is there's a bit of, uh, well, the whole PCB is basically put into some sort of potting or, um, likely for heat transfer or something like that, uh, compound. And then it's actually coming through, uh, the, the hole. So we'll take a look at that in more detail in a second, but you can see there's, um, a main micro up in the corner here. So we have like clearly what looks to be the main micro in a BGA package. Um, and as well as various like uh, drivers, um, as you'd sort of expect in an ECU that's going to be driving um, coils and uh, fuel injection and stuff like that. So nothing too, too crazy. Um, you'll also notice, so there's no conformal coating on this. So the, the entire moisture resistance is done via this seal on the outside. So that's actually sort of nice for probing, right? That there's no... Uh, conformal coating on it. Normally you'd have these guys being really heavily conformally coated. The The main device itself, so if we go and put this under um, a little microscope here, and then let me just get that set up so you can see. Okay, um, so go down, I'm working a bit upside down here. Uh, there you go. So um, the main chip isn't something that I've ever really heard of. Uh, and this is because it's probably like a unique part number. Um, what you have is it's clearly like a Freescale now NXP part. Uh, they make one series. So there's one series they do for automotive cars. Um, and it's just like a power PC core, dual or triple core typically. So if you pop this uh, part number into Google you'll kind of find some um, Russian forms talking about that specific part number. So if we would we pull that up here, ah, here it is. Um, so if you search that, that part number in Google, there's these like Russian things. So they have the part number in question here, um, but then they mentioned this is like a standard free scale part. So this MPC 5, 
uh, what is this, 5676R. Um, so we can go ahead and take a look at that data sheet over here. Um, and you can see that it is indeed in their their PowerPC dual core family. So assuming that this is, assuming they're correct, um, I haven't validated this at all yet, but it would be something in this series. Um, so this is the full manual. Um, there you go. So 5676R um, has two cores and it's the Z7 uh, core. So it's a PowerPC type core. Um, there's no, so interestingly, you know, six megs of flash, 384K of SRAM. Um, one thing that I looked for that I didn't see is a hardware security module, so HSM. Um, and this would be like a, a more secure version. So I've seen some sort of low res photos of the E99 ECU you can find, and it's, it's clearly different. I suspect in the E99, they may have upgraded. So within this series, there's other devices um, that actually have more, uh, more security. They have a hardware security module. So I'm wondering if they upgraded to, to one of those. Um, some other interesting stuff around here though, while well, I've got this under the microscope, um, if you go over to the connectors, they're actually not soldered down. So if you're used to sort of, you know, normal electronics, let's say, this is kind of interesting. Um, instead what it is, is it's like a, uh, it's a push fit. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, but they're sort of like these Y's. Um, there you go. So they sort of like spear into the PCB. Um, so all those connectors actually aren't soldered down at all. Um, and if you take a look, by the way, so what I was mentioning, those little streamers coming through, let's get a good section here. Um, so you can see here where all that like spaghetti looking stuff. So, so this is the, um, on the underside of the board, if you look at like, uh, where's a good spot? If you look right at the edge here, you'll see, um, okay, so there's the PCB edge. Focus you up here. Um, there's the PCB edge, and there's like this orange stuff below it. Um, and basically, this is what's going to be underneath it. So that orange stuff there. Um, so that's what they're, you know, that's what's coming through on this thing. So, so the next step um, I want to do is try to see if I can get this PCB out. So I've actually removed, there's six bolts that also hold it down. Um, and so what I'd like to do is be able to get it out. So this device um, in particular, you know, there is in the corner here, you might notice what looks like possibly a, a debug header. Um, it's most likely disabled. So based on how long it took for for people to actually hack this, I suspect that they've disabled um, at least uh, somewhat properly the JTAG and other debug stuff. Um, but what I would like to check out, right, is so if we check the data sheet out again, uh, what you'll notice is that there's a, if we look for uh, something called censorship, so this is their um, this is how they do sort of the, the readout protection. Um, and there's basically a censorship that can enable or disable um, JTAG as well as the internal flash memory. And one of the other things that have, so in this table here, we have a, this little boot mode um, table and there's this special censorship control word. So this is a word written to flash memory. And so uh, basically depending on the value of this word in flash memory, it affects what the censorship is. Um, so if you remember, if you've ever seen this LPC um, attack, so Chris Kurlinski did this cool demo where he attacked uh, an LPC series device and their fuse readout. And if I open that here, um, what you can see, let me just find this. Uh, basically what happens is on these LPC devices, they have this interesting feature that um, the code read protection is done in such a way it's, it's a, a word in flash memory. And here you can basically see there's four potential valid values of flash um, or valid values for that flash memory. If it's any other value, it becomes um, enabled. So if it's any value that's not one of these four magic values, the JTAG is turned on. 
Uh, and the reason you do this is that the flash memory comes back from factory in like a totally random state. Uh, it's not, you know, when it's produced, it's not all FFs or something. You have to actually do an erase cycle. Um, so normally what happens is there's uh, some intermediate modes, like the ST series does this. There's an intermediate mode that lets you erase the memory, um, but not just read everything. So the LPC series, or parts of the LPC series, not the entire series, did this kind of incorrectly in that if you corrupt this value, so if you do fault injection on it, um, it just totally turns it on. So for this device, it's again, they've done this kind of correctly because if it's any corrupted value, what happens is um, it enters a censored state, so censored being where it's kind of disabled stuff. Um, and you can see if it's censored, it basically disables um, this uh, Nexus or JTAG interface. So presumably the JTAG's turned off for us. What's sort of interesting down here though is this other, there's a serial bootloader as well. Um, and if we boot into serial bootloader mode and you corrupt that value, um, what actually happens, and also the serial, I, I believe the serial port's always enabled in this device, so this is this specific device, um, because these boot config pins are actually, they're physical pins somewhere. So somewhere here, there's some pins, uh, two of these go to these boot config flags. Uh, and if you take a look at the boot config, Right. If I can change it from the default, presumably it's set to zero zero right now. If I can change it to zero one, um, this means that I now actually have access to to a bootloader. Um, that bootloader is going to have a password, so you can see either it has a public they call it or a flash password, um, depending on the censorship state. And what happens is there's a public password that's just known. Um, and the difference here is if it's if it's not censored, you'll also notice, so there's no like, you know, quick hack here. If it's, if I can corrupt this value, the internal flash is then turned off. So it's preventing a readout with the known password. Um, it also could enable um, the, the JTAG here as well. So which would be the same as this, right? Um, if you, if you are able to make it, uh, into the censorship control state, you could turn on the Nexus with the internal flash, but this is going to be trickier because this requires, um, you know, this needs to corrupt the actual comparison after it's saying like, is this a 55AA um, or not? So with any luck, you could possibly get that to work, but what's going to be a lot easier is tripping into the serial routine and letting it use the public password, which won't give me flash access, uh, but might, you know, give me points to so to start with that. So for this to work, I would need to figure out where the, the boot config uh, pins are. So the boot config is actually done via pins. Um, so that's something that you'd have to look at. And if you take a look at this device again, um, you can see, for example, so I tried prying up a little bit, but um, you might be able to see here, if you, you can sort of, you know, you can pry up pretty hard without without seeming to do anything too interesting. Um, so unfortunately those uh, push pins are gonna make it tricky because you know it's been pushed down like this and I'm kind of going at an angle. Um, what I might try here is, so you can see what's happened is the connectors go through the case um, and there's a little sort of plastic rivet here that's been basically melted over. Um, and you can also see this black stuff that was around the outside that's quite uh, hard has clearly been put in here. So I suspect there's a bunch of potting compound around here as well. Um, so what I'm going to try next, and see how it goes, is to um, heat the outside of this, probably with blowtorch again, uh, and then pry up. So hopefully if I can soften some of this stuff, it would let me um, pop it out. But, but anyway, that's kind of a view of what... Um, you know, what a modern ECU looks like. So this is a device that's supposed to be, you know, the, the prelude to a, a new, a real new design. Um, and, you know, it's using, it's starting to get better security in here. As I say, I'm curious about the E99 ECU. I suspect it's switched to um, a device with an HSM. Uh, I'm very curious as well because I actually have, so previously I looked a little bit at, um, 
some of these series of devices, so the 5748G, uh, actually have sort of a, a target board for. So I've played around with some of the password comparison stuff on that. So I have some some ideas of where you could see some side channel. Um, there's also, so there was a pretty cool paper um, by Riskier that did a safety is not equal to security. So if we just Google that here and we find this white paper um, and it was actually looking at fault injection on uh, automotive ECUs. So they just call it, um, and they actually did look at JTAG enable, and they just call it to like ACE, ACLD1 and ACLD2. Um, but the way they describe these ECUs, they basically describe how the uh, configuration is done. And there's sort of two main ECU brands, either these PowerPC ones or Infineon Aurex. Um, so you can pretty, pretty easily figure out, you know, which of these two is which one. Um, it's not... Yeah, so you can see these JTAG success rates are slow, um, either lock bits or password, 1.3%. Um, but if you just need it to work once, right, that's that's pretty easy. Like 1.3% isn't bad at all. So that's some of the experimenting I'm hoping to do in the next little while, um, playing with some of these ECU devices.